Mr. President, great to see you. Thank you very much. Uh, summit number two, when I heard Kim Jong-un say, you know, was asked the question, are you ready to denuclearize? His answer was, I wouldn't be here. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. And then he goes on, and you said that might be the best answer you've ever heard. Well, and we're working towards something, but we didn't sign anything today. It didn't quite work out. I would say that I wasn't satisfied, and perhaps he wasn't satisfied. Good relationship, but I decided that this wasn't the right time to sign something. So we'll see what happens over a period of time. It's funny. It came up on the radio show. We've known each other well over two decades. Yeah. The art of the deal. One of the key uh, components in the book is you say you've always got to be able to walk up to the last second. Yeah. yeah we'll Reagan, Reykjavik. Well, whether it's Reagan, whether it's anybody, I mean, you have to be prepared to walk. And this just wouldn't have been good for our country. And frankly, uh, he can look at it the same way. Maybe he can look at it the same way. But we get along really well. Uh, he's a different kind of a guy. And I just said, look, this isn't going to be working. So I, I have a feeling something down the line will happen. And it'll happen. It'll be good. But and this just was wasn't choice. Good. You said... This isn't well, the deal. let's call it both. Let's call it both. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say it was my choice. It was something that he wanted to do and I didn't want to do it. And I just don't think it would have been good, maybe for either of us. But mm -hmm. uh, we'll get something worked out eventually. Can you give us any insight into where maybe the sticking point was? Well, they wanted to denuke certain areas, and I wanted everything. And the sanctions are there, and I didn't want to give up the sanctions unless we had a real program. Mm -hmm. And they're not ready for that, and I understand that fully. I really do. I mean, they spent a lot of time building it, and uh, that doesn't mean the world has to be happy. But I wanted them to denuke, and uh, they wouldn't do the full. They wanted to do some, and I guess a lot of people would have said that's a great start, but I just didn't feel it was right. Let me, let me ask you about, last night you said, he said something at dinner. And I won't say it. I'll let him say it. Can you bring us into that dinner? Well, no, I, I just think he's, first of all, he's, he's a character. He was and, laughing a lot. And he's, he's, a, he's a real personality, and he's very smart. He's sharp as you can be, and he's a real leader, and he's uh, pretty mercurial. I don't say that necessarily in a bad way, but he's a pretty mercurial guy. But he was talking to the press a little bit, and... You know, he's not big into talking to the press, but the press came in. Look, bottom line, I think he wants to get something done, but this wasn't the right time. And Vietnam, Hanoi, where we are right now, they have treated us so fantastically, so good. They've done such a great job. Mm -hmm. They're very proud of the job they've done, and they've really treated us. I mean, it's been an incredible two and a half days. You kept saying, and managing expectations, you said, I'm in no rush. I want the right deal, and the right deal for you is complete denuclearization that is verified and on-site inspections on demand. It's a much tougher deal to make. Maybe it won't get made, but that's the deal that we should have, and you can't give up everything if you don't get that. Now, we could have done large portions, but you're not getting that, so we'll see what happens. Again, the relationship is very good. He likes me. I like him. Some people say, oh, you shouldn't like him. I said, why shouldn't I like him? I like him. We get along great. We'll see what happens. Let me ask you about, let's go back to Singapore, where I had an opportunity to see you right. there. And hostages were released. Right. Remains have come home. Right. And the interesting and most profound part of it was that no rockets have been fired over Japan. That's Guam's right. not threatened. That's right. And the continental United States was being threatened. Um, Progress in that area? A lot of progress, and it's a lot of progress, not necessarily on paper, although we actually signed a very good agreement. It said no denuclearization. You know, we're going to have that we are going to have a complete denuke. I call it denuking, but it's denuclearization. And it was, it was a document that was signed, and it was a very good document. The fact is that he also said he's not going to do testing, and he said that recently. And he said it again to me just a little while ago. He doesn't want to do testing. He's not going to do that. That's a big thing. No rockets, no anything. And I believe, you know, when he tells me that, I will take him at, it, at his word. Uh, but we'll see how it all goes. I think we had a very good two days, but I just don't think maybe either of us were ready.
All right, so during my exclusive interview with President Trump here in Vietnam, I did ask about the Mueller investigation, his declaration of a border emergency, the Democrats' new deal. But first, I asked him about Michael Cohn and his testifying on Capitol Hill. Let's take a look. Two-part question. Number one, what do you have to say about the things that he was saying? And number two, what about the Democrats? I thought, I thought politics stopped at the water's edge in America, but well, not today. I, I think maybe more than anything else, the fact that they held it today, where I'm working on something that is very, very important for the world, not only our country, for the world, was really inappropriate. The Democrats, the hatred is so incredible, and they couldn't help themselves. And that's the way it is. Uh, as far as Cohn is concerned, uh, he's convicted, he's a liar, he's defrauded at a high level. He's got a lot of problems. And, you know, it was very interesting because he lied so much. I watched some of it. I actually was able to watch some of it. He lied so much, and yet he said, uh, when it came to collusion, the whole hoax with the Russia collusion, right. it's just a witch hunt hoax. And very, by the way, very, very bad for our country because it really stops you from he doing said, what you're supposed no to be doing. He said no collusion. And I said, it's funny, he lied about so many things, and yet he could have said he might as well lie about that one, too. Mm -hmm. But he said no collusion. And everybody said no collusion. Uh, Richard Burr, Senator Burr, said no collusion. Senate Intelligence, the House has come up, as you know, the committee, Devin Nunes and all, they said no collusion. And yet it goes on and on. And two years. It's, it's two, yeah, I guess more than that. But there was collusion. I, it really was. Look, when you think of it, it was really from the time I came down on the escalator with Melania. I came down on the escalator, and I think it started just shortly after that. It is a terrible thing, and hopefully people will get because no president should have to have that happen to them. It's so bad for the country. It's a hoax. It's just a, a terrible witch hunt, and it shouldn't happen to another president. And yet, I think I've been like the today. most successful. I think I've been the most successful president in the first two years of office. If you look at the tax cuts and regulation cuts and all of the things that you say so nicely on many of your shows, but you look at what we've done for the vets and what we've done for the military, $716 billion, and all of the things that we've done. I mean, it's been a tremendous administration, but we always have to, we have to always fight this hoax that's going on. It's a shame. It's a very sad thing for our country. You know, I, I was kind of dragged in a little bit into the Michael Cohn issue. I interviewed him many times on radio right. and TV. He was never my attorney. He did apologize to me for his attorney saying that in court. And, but I can tell you personally, he said to me at least a dozen times that he made the decision on the payments and he didn't tell you. Yeah. He told me yeah. personally. Well, he did. And he made the decision. And, and remember this, he's an attorney. Whatever decision he makes, you're supposed to rely on an attorney to make a decision. Somebody said one of the very good Republican members today said that, uh, you know, he's supposed to be an attorney. He's out there uh, doing all sorts of things. When you're when you have an attorney, you're supposed to be able to rely on your attorney. Attorney claim it's called, privilege. Well, it's, but it's also called reliance. And uh, he just was not much of an attorney. That I will tell you. But he went up today, and a lot of people thought he was very bad. I watched some of it. I thought it was I thought it was a terrible display of dishonesty. Actually, I actually thought as I watched it, there's a criminal referral as a result of today by Congressman Mark Meadows yeah, I heard that. and maybe some inconsistencies. And I think the Democrats in that sense didn't care at all about Michael Cohen, who they were calling a liar a long time ago. The Mueller report, next week we expect it, right. and based on Burr... I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but uh, right, Why based on Senator it? Burr and uh, Devin Nunes and everybody else that's looked at it, including Michael Cohen, mm -hmm. no collusion. And, you know, this was all about collusion with Russia at the... Collusion, delusion, and uh, it's a shame, but it's just one of those things. You live with it, you win it. Uh, so I hope it's going to be an honest report. If it isn't, we fight it. Very strongly, we fight it. Because when you look at what happened at the FBI at the top levels with McCabe and the dishonesty, Comey and the dishonesty. James Baker had said he thought Hillary should be indicted. That's right, James Baker. He was another one that was dismissed. Um, you look at Strzok and his lover, Lisa Page, and you look at what went on with that whole deal with the insurance policy, uh, the insurance policy just in case she loses. I will tell you, it's a very dishonest group of people, and it's 
I've done the, I've done a great service for this country by exposing it. When you look at what happened there and at justice, and uh, they call it justice, but it hasn't been justice. When you take a look at what what's gone on, I'm very proud of the fact that you know we've exposed a lot of people. It's like 12. Somebody said much more than that now. Yeah. And this is great dishonesty at a very high level. We can't let that happen to our country. If we have equal justice under the law, equal application of our laws, and we had a Russian dossier yeah. to influence the American yeah. people against you, yeah. and then it was used to spy on your campaign through yeah. an associate violating his constitutional rights, yeah. we have a new attorney general. Well, I think we have a great attorney general, I hope, and I think he's going to do a terrific job. He's smart, he's tough, he loves the country, and he loves the Department of Justice. He loves the Department of Justice and the FBI. Mm -hmm. And Bill Barr is, I think, going to be exceptional. And you need somebody exceptional because it has to be cleaned out. What's gone on there for years has been terrible. You look at Orr mm -hmm. and Orr's wife who worked for GPS Fusion, and they're the ones that did this phony report, the fake dossier. Uh, boy, it's a, it's a hornet's nest. And I think, uh, I think that... Bill is going to do a great job. One last question. The immigration. You saw the vote in the House. Yeah. You might lose some Republicans, but it doesn't look like you will uh, oh, we'll be fine. veto. You will veto it. It won't be overridden. Yeah. How much? I understand that there's about 23 million for all the other things that will be That's useful right. for border That's security. Right. A lot. And how much will you be able to have? You have the 1.375. Well, first of all, we're going to be building over 200 miles of of wall. I'm going to call it wall as opposed to barriers or slats. They said, could you call it slats or barriers? And we played the game for a little while. And then you just say, hey, look, this is we need border security. You can't have border security without a wall and a strong wall. If you didn't have it in Tijuana, you would have people coming across by the thousands and thousands. And I will say this, whether it's ICE or Border Patrol or just law enforcement, they've done an incredible job at the border. Apprehensions, the greatest number we've ever done. You look at the number of people, but if we had a wall, we wouldn't have to apprehend. People wouldn't come into our country. Drugs wouldn't come into our country. Uh, the human trafficking is incredible. The number of people brought into our country. Sex trafficking. And they don't come through the points of entry. They come through in the middle of a desert where you have open space. So I think that really it's a very dangerous thing for people to be voting against border security for anybody, including Republicans. I, I really think that Republicans that vote against border security and the wall I think, you know, I've been okay at predicting things. I think they put themselves at great jeopardy. In, in 10 years, the next president won't have an airplane. We may not have cows. We won't have a combustion engine. Yeah. Um, late, even during birth, abortion, 70% tax rates, everything's free. I assume socialism will never be in America, as you've been saying. What do you think of that crazy proposal? Well, it's an incredible thing. I see senators that have been there for a long time, you know, well-known senators, named senators, and... I look at them and they're endorsing it, and yet what are they endorsing? No, you look at it. it you look at abortion and during birth. Yeah, a hundred trillion dollars, and you couldn't do it for that. Yeah, but uh, it's it's and it's not even the money. It's so ridiculous. No planes. Let's not fly anymore. It it is crazy. But personally, they should go with it. I love it. It's one of the greatest plans I've ever seen. As long <laughs> as long as they're the ones that have to sell it, not me. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm, uh, happy I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the rest of them are going to do. But already some have endorsed it. It's incredible. Mr. President, we appreciate you being with us. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.